know what a lot of people talk about to getting in shape, achieving your goal body, feeling better overall is environment. What most people are doing is with a spouse who supports them, but supports all of their behavior, whether it's behavior that benefits them or shitty behavior that actually pushes them backwards. Filling your life with friends who are constantly tempting you with shitty food, with a good time. Family who feels like baggage. Constantly surrounded by people, whether this is, again, friends, family, or even in your work environment. Whose idea of fun is happy hour. Whose idea of fun is a Sunday fun day at a bar. This makes getting and staying in shape, getting and staying healthy, really fucking hard. It makes you feel like there is something wrong with you, like you don't have the willpower to stay healthy. When in reality, what's actually happening is environment trumps motivation. It trumps willpower all day long. How do you expect to create a new habit or new habits if you're constantly surrounded by old stimuli? This is like a kid in school who keeps getting in trouble for messing around with their buddy that's next to them. The teacher doesn't keep them next to each other and just hope and cross their fingers for better. He or she separates them, right? She takes Timmy and puts him across the room from Bobby so they can't fuck around. So separate yourself from the things, the people, the situations that are keeping you stuck. I am currently reading the book. This is the book. For those of, the, for those of you on YouTube, you can see. If you're listening, you can't. But um, the book is called The Sooner You Know, The Better by Libby Redden. And I actually found her from a TEDx talk on YouTube last week. And I have this thing where... I feel so strongly pulled and magnetized to certain people, and she is one of them. Everything that she talks about or that I've heard her talk about thus far is so far up my alley. It clicks so well in my brain. It's funny because she's, I think she's still in her 20s, and so reading a personal development book from someone who's in their 20s, some of the verbiage and language, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so different than the books that were written in freaking 1980 and repurposed. So I highly recommend checking her out. Again, it's Libby Redden. Her podcast, her TEDx talk, um, her book. The book specifically is for teens and she calls it 20-somethings. <laughs> Uh, tickle. Ooh. But I think anyone and everyone could honestly benefit from her and what she talks about. So emotional intelligence is a really hot topic that she brings up very frequently. And this is something that I'm extremely interested in learning more about. I feel like the situation with realizing your environment isn't serving you and taking action requires this level of self-awareness and of emotional intelligence that maybe a lot of people just scrape the surface of. And so this is what I want to dive into today is how and, and the different steps to take to go from living in this environment where you're constantly tempted, you're constantly having to test your willpower to living in an environment that actually serves you, actually pushes you, surrounded by people who support your positive behavior and call you out on your negative behavior. So the first step is truly awareness. It's realizing that something in your life is not serving you. And what most people do is they just raw dog life. They're constantly trying to distract themselves. They're throwing themselves into work. They're throwing themselves into play. They're using alcohol to really just distract themselves from knowing like, okay, life doesn't feel that good, but I'm just going to chase after this high. I'm going to buy the Amazon cart and that'll make me feel better for the week. 
Instead, what you should be doing is before you actually hit this breaking point, this is what people usually do is they distract themselves so long before they hit this breaking point of like, okay, something in life needs to change. And then we have this like midlife crisis or quarter life crisis. So instead, be proactive. So before you hit that breaking point, realize who realize what is taking away from your life from your potential and i actually got asked the other day what my definition of full potential was she's like i'm curious what what that means to you and the way that i described this is how far a person can stretch their performance in whatever area that they choose this could be business this could be art it could be running it could be knitting it could be speaking on stages it could be even traveling if that's your life's mission if that's what you want to get really freaking good at is finding all the deals and and figuring out how to travel for free absolutely and then using the optimal combination of their personal strengths and skills And whether you believe in God or universe or what the heck, where we came from or not, I personally believe that we were all given God-sent special skills, and that's what life is about. It's about discovering your skills and using them to the best of their abilities. So, aka... When you lay your head on the pillow each night, you know that you gave it your all in either trying to find out what those special skills are or continuing to develop those special skills and master them. And I think our mission as a human race, honestly, is progression and progression in those special skills. And if you feel like you're not progressing, you're going to be miserable. If you are trying to force yourself into a box, then maybe, maybe again, like I'm going to use the example of your parents. You, they want you to choose the safe route. They want you to be an accountant because that's, that's, what is safe and gives you the benefits and gives you the security, but you're actually a very artistic person and you have this sense that your special skills are actually more of this artistic side. Maybe you want to be an artist. And so you're going to live a life of complete misalignment if you're just going for whatever is safest and you're going to be miserable. You're going to be missing out. You're going to to overall feel unfulfilled because you were given those again god sent special skills for a reason and it should be your life's mission to unlock those skills to whatever extent that you possibly can so step one is becoming aware of what's blocking you we got off on a little tangent there but (laughs) step one is to become aware of what's blocking you from that progression what's blocking you from unlocking those special skills step two is choosing change and this means that you have to be willing to make intentional moves what most people are doing is they're half-assing this change they have one foot in one foot out it's like i still want to have friends so maybe i'll just go sometimes like maybe i'll cut it down and then they go and then they end up drinking and then they wake up the next day with a ball of anxiety in their chest they're like why did i even go And then it repeats over and over and over. I know because I lived this for years of my life. I had high school friends I thought that I would have in my life forever. And I remember in the the end days of those relationships, there were a few times that I would go and I would hang out with them. And I'd feel literally so much guilt for talking about my goals for talking about my business for talking about my health and my fitness goals and i felt like i needed to almost dumb myself down to not outshine them i could see like the envy and the jealousy piercing through their eyes as the words were coming out of my mouth and i would i would 
clamp up and be like, I'm so uncomfortable right now. Like, I don't even feel like I can be myself. I don't even feel like I can talk about what I actually want to talk about. And that is not friendship, y'all. <laughs> if you feel that way, that is not friendship. That is a fucking jail cell where your goals and your dreams go to die. <laughs> Sounds morbid, but seriously. So step three, step two, I mean, is half is full assing your change if you choose to change actually do it full asset clean out the junk in your life so that you have room to implement the good and this can be really hard it can be really difficult but the sooner that you just say you know what these friends they don't actually serve me and i I simply just have them in my life because it's comfortable and because i want to feel supported the sooner that you your life will start to change Okay, so step three then is fill your life with new supportive stimuli. So what most people do is they say that they want to find people who push them, but they settle for people who make them feel good inside. They settle for people who are doing good, just not quite as good as themselves. And what needs to happen instead is you need to get close as fuck with as many killers, as many beasts as you possibly can. Find people who are out here living the life that you want to live and learn from them. Don't only learn about the skills and the actions, but also the how, the mindset. This is what I'm constantly telling the baddies inside of my program, Badass Revolution, is I tell them, I'm like, pick my brain. Your aim should be to understand my thought process around food, my thought process around exercise, my thought process around my body. When I have a negative body image day, pick my brain and ask, like, how do I talk myself through that? Not only what I do, right, like what clothes I wear or what I eat, it's also the thought process around that cake, around those cupcakes. So if you want to get rich, surround yourself with rich people and study and adopt a rich person mindset. If you want to get jacked, surround yourself with jacked people, study and adopt not only their behavior, but also a jacked person's mindset. And you might be asking, like, where the heck do I find these people? Um, especially in my 20s and my 30s. Like, how do, you make, how do you make friends past your teens? And I used to think this was really hard, but it's actually extremely easy. You just can't be lazy with it. Social media is such a powerful tool. Uh, start sparking conversations there. Like, go and search and look for people and s- connect with them. Simply connect with them. So fucking easy. You may need to invest some money into yourself. I sure as shit have had to. I grew up surrounded by the middle class, by corner bar goers, which is totally fine for them. If that's the life that they want to live, fucking go for it. No judgment here. But that's not the life that I envisioned for myself. And so I had to break free from that. I had to, again kind of clean the slate, (laughs) wipe the slate, wait, what is that saying? Wipe the slate clean. And uh, I have had to spend, or I have spent, not even had to, I've chosen to spend multi five figures getting into rooms with people who are 10 steps ahead of me so that I can learn the skills and I can adopt their mindsets. And so not only does this help to almost put you on the line to the things that you say you're going to do, there's obviously an energetic there and an accountability factor there, but it also opens up so many doors because you're connecting to so many other people who are further along than you and who have that mindset and who have similar lifestyles and similar goals and it turns into a freaking magical process and I will never stop. I will never, ever, ever, ever stop getting in the room. I will spend as much money as I possibly need to to get in as many rooms and get as close to as many. There's a fucking fly flying around my head. 
I'm getting in as many rooms as I possibly can until I essentially crack the code, right? I don't think it, I don't think the code is ever actually cracked, but it's like you just get one step further, one step further, and I I literally will never stop. And so if you're ready for a space where people are never gonna stop, we're never gonna stop. <laughs> If you're ready for a space filled with women who are pushing themselves, who are creating higher standards for themselves, who are creating new environments for themselves, um, Badass Revolution is the place for you. You can apply using the link somewhere. Whether it's down below, you can find it. Okay, so step four then is sticking with it. And what most people do here is they say... They want someone who pushes them. They say that they are dedicated, but then when push comes to shove, when someone actually pushes them, they get triggered, they get defensive, they get pissed off anytime that they are truly challenged. And uh, a lot of times too, a little bit of, a little bit of resistance kicks in and then we revert right back to our comfort zones. And so this is where that self-awareness piece comes in, the emotional intelligence piece comes in, and you have to realize if you're getting triggered, if you're getting defensive, if you're getting pissed off and you're letting those emotions dictate your behavior, then we're pretty low on the emotional intelligence scale. So you have to practice this awareness, this constant, I call it reflection into yourself, like keep a journal. And this is something that I literally do is anytime I get triggered, I write it down and I'm like, what caused this? And like, what the fuck is, is bubbling up inside of me? Why did I feel the need to act that way? Think that way and constantly be on this, this journey of self-discovery and, um, you know, heightening your emotional intelligence. And so, this transformation, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. I mean, I've been at this for more than five years and I feel like I've just scraped the surface. It, it, I think we expect it to get easier and like more comfortable. And the thing is, is it never gets comfortable. I, I am so gosh dang uncomfortable every single day in my life, but you learn to live with the discomfort and almost love the discomfort and continue to like thrive in that discomfort and uh, you have to allow people to call you out and call you to rise if that's what you want in your life you have to allow for it so actually this happened (laughs) to me last night logan called me to rise he called me on my bullshit he called me on my self-sabotaging behavior and i really appreciate that and and i think your spouse specifically this is this is like the bread and butter as to who you can become. If you are with someone who keeps you held back, who is constantly tempting you, who is supporting your shitty behavior, I mean, you're with that person the most. And so it's going to be very, very, very difficult to break free from those shackles almost I look at it so that's that's my biggest piece of advice is if you're going to focus on any area of your environment focus on picking a rock solid spouse um and when I when I say that (laughs) with him with Logan it's like when I I can call myself out right and I can say yep I I slacked today hardcore and uh, he's not the type of person who's going to say, oh, that's okay. Like you, you work hard, you deserve the rest because he knows that that's not what I need in those moments. He knows that I need someone to call me on my bullshit. And so you have to, you have to, again, if you're asking for that, I, sometimes I get a little bit triggered and pissed off like me. And then I kind of catch myself and I'm like, you're right. You're right. You're right. And so you have to let people help. You have to be self-aware enough to either not get triggered or if you do get triggered, really reflecting on it and coming back to the situation with a clear mind. So recapping. Your environment trumps your willpower every single day, every single time. If you want to change your life, you need to change your environment. Step one awareness awareness that something is off step two choosing change and being a full asser in that change not one foot in not one foot out 
Number three, scrape out the bad, integrate the new. And then number four, stick with it and thrive in the discomfort. Get uncomfortable. Try your hardest every single day to get uncomfortable. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not winning. (laughs) Okay, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode. I love ya and we will talk next week.